A site that tracks satellites. <laughs> Not one, multiple, thousands. That's what I'm gonna be trying to do today. Why satellites? Have you ever seen these pictures? That's from a satellite. Need directions? How about the weather? Calling someone? These are all satellites. In fact, let me show you something. This is Starlink. They provide internet all over the world. How many satellites do you think they have? Five? Ten? The actual number is 2,500, and there's gonna be more. A lot more, actually. All of them are floating over your head right now. That's just Starlink, nothing else. My goal is not only to track Starlink, but everything. That means the Hubble telescope, ISS, anything I can get my hands on, it's gonna get tracked. And that means around 6,000 satellites. I've made something like this before, but it cost money, and it only tracked a couple of satellites, not thousands. The goal is to have something like this, a globe with a 3D model of an object that updates over time. Speaking of a globe, we actually need to build one. 3GS is what I'm going to be using. I've had experience with it, I've made stuff with it, JavaScript. Plus, look, there's a globe right there. There's a bunch of globes, and GitHub uses it. Building out the globe isn't that difficult. All we need is a camera, a sphere for the Earth, a texture for the Earth, and a couple of them, actually. One of them is going to be a night one, so it looks all pretty and realistic. And another thing was we want to have that glow, so it looks more earthy and whatnot. It just looks a lot better with the glow, I feel like. After we have the glow, what we're gonna need is the latitude and longitude in 3D space. We got this figured out pretty quick after a quick search on Stack Overflow. We found out that all we need to give it is the radius, the latitude and longitude, and we get this 3D positional data and we could output it. So if I put in my latitude and longitude real quick, you get my 3D position. And now you know where I live, please don't kill me. So I started messing around with it a little bit, and when I was messing around with one of the satellites, just updating its position minute by minute, I thought my code was wrong because this one satellite wasn't moving at all. And I thought that was the main point of satellites, for it to actually, you know, move. But what I figured out after some research, it was a geostationary satellite. Those are usually used for surveying the weather, or just surveying the land. And the reason that they're not moving is because they're not too far where the Earth spins too quick, but not too close where the satellites move faster than the Earth can spin. They're just in the right location, which happens to be about 35,000 miles away, where it could stay in one spot. I thought that was really cool. This has no use to us if we don't have the satellites longitude and latitude, of course. So how are we going to get that? TLEs. Two line elements. Every single satellite has one of these. For example, here's the ISS. Here's also the Hubble, and you can get all of Starlinks as well. So if you go on NORAD's website, you'll see that there's a bunch of TLEs. This TLE data has all of this information, the epoch, the mean, motion, all the stuff that I don't understand. But somebody made the math for it to turn it into longitude and latitude. But by the way, is it right to say longitude? Is that, is that how you say it? Longitude? Longitude. Okay, so the next part is the most difficult part, I feel is to show every single satellite all at once. Now I'm gonna be honest, when I first started, I wanted to show every single satellite as a 3D model. If you saw in the beginning, you saw Sputnik, just a retired satellite from the Russians. I had the ISS, I had Hubble, I had almost every single one. But the problem is, is when you're dealing with around 6,000, you can't really do that. So what I settled for was a bunch of white dots. The problem that arose is that we had it working for only one satellite. Now we have to have it working for thousands of satellites. When we had this working though, this caused actually a lot of lag. It went down from 165 FPS all the way down to 65. There is something pretty cool about this though. There's a little line, if you could see it, there's a, just a line of a bunch of white dots. I didn't understand what those were. I figured out that those were Starlinks. And the reason that they're in a line is so they can avoid collision. I wonder if this is to address the complaints that they almost collided with other satellites when they first launched. That's just a thought. But back to the main topic. If I had 6,000 just like 3D models, I would be expecting at least like 2 FPS. But it was still pretty cool to see 6,000 satellites all at once. I mean, that's just mind boggling for me. Next time, I actually want to have like the Hubble telescope and everything like that. Even an image of them would be cool. For now though, this looks awesome. 